thank you very much for that warm welcome and thank you and McMahon for inviting me to be here with you today because uh, it's a very special day and Monday the 17th of October, the date that the United Nations she said uh, eradication of poverty in the world day and of course happy birthday for that and happy birthday also to Un Kasson on its 30th year of being in existence. Uh, 30 is now a big landmark year in our lives. So I think it's a great achievement of three decades of the work of Un Kasson to have brought you to where you are. So, and I think we must pay tribute as well to and Louise Gilligan and to now Minister Catherine Zaboon, who said for with you all for having achieved what Ron Cosson has achieved and for setting up that great objective of uh, having uh, through trans educational transform community to have an object of er eradicating poverty have the cohesion. So um, I think it's a great, it's a good day. Uh, as it's accepted now by those who've um, researched it that uh, to citizens living in a disadvantaged area, they're caught in a cycle of poverty and that produces unemployment from one generation to another. And if it leaves the children and the young people of the area with limited prospects and without the positive role models that they might follow their example. So while education has always traditionally in Ireland been the way to betterment, if you don't have the encouragement and motivation being provided at home or the environment, there can be just a fatalistic acceptance that further education is not for you, that it's for other people. And um, just you just do the, the numbers that are required by the compulsory thing and that, that's it for you. So the support of an enlightened uh, outside vision and positive intervention that those who are concerned with this, that's of immense value for people to be encouraged to have the confidence in their own self-worth and come to consider that there could be more courses in life available to them through education. Now that intervention came to Dalla to the intervention of, uh, say, Dr. Uh, Louise Gilligan and Catherine Zabone, who set to work to get the support for setting up the Shanty Project, educational project in, 18, in 1986. And the object was to encourage self-belief in people that they had the potential that was untapped and that education would be worthwhile and enjoyment and it could lead to a more fulfilling life for themselves. And that there were pathways to getting the qualifications in different areas of study and skills that they might have an interest in or an aptitude for. And that this could lead, to, in turn, to better life, better employment opportunities, etc. Now, the project's aim was to bring together the people of Calla West as a community that would have a sense of solidarity, cohesion and self-worth, and that would be a, become a community of informed, active citizens in caring for themselves and for their community. It's an amazing story how with that vision, the skill, the know-how and the dedication that the Shanty Project has been created and has grown and flourished and progressively broadened its service and services. Now known as Uncasa on the Pathway, it's the home base is here in Jobstown, Tala, and it has become the largest community uh, educational organisation in the country and it's leading the way in innovation and the fulfilling of further educational uh, uh, its, uh, other pro pro uh, education provision, provision goals. Uh, there's the Open Learning Centre, the library, the, uh, the rainbow early, early starting, the support for parents, the, all the things that are involved in that, the children from 0 to 6 that they have, the, the life start, the spirals, the Parents Plus, etc. Um, and sociology, in fact, in other mainstream universities in the last number of years, particularly in the last 20, have really attached great importance to community development and community uh, leadership in their mainstream courses. So, in fact, 
the development here in Nkusson's model of transformative education uh, committed to the development of the students' full personal potential and the enhancement of their capacity to take responsibility for change in their communities with the object of eradicating poverty and social injustice. So they're really right at the forefront of, uh, of the educational thinking, both in mainstream and in community. And the development now of the Virtual Community uh, College is an amazing initiative in the effort to combat disadvantage, because it provides further educational opportunities for those who, because of their circumstances, because of the cost, their geographical location, are not in a position to attend uh, to a mainstream, so that through the virtual college, they are now able to have this opportunity in building their, their aspirations and fulfilling their aspirations. They have the determination and they feel in themselves and this allows them to fulfill that aspiration. So I think it's wonderful that it has had the two successful start-up years and that it is now in the position to fulfill, to broaden, to remap to the, to the country. So it's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, achievement. And I, I just so believe it will be very successful. I was very interested to see the people who have actually done mainstream um, university qualifications, that they want to come back so that they get to understand, you know, the, the um, just the training that would help them to be community leaders and develop community. Um, so um, now, now that's to, to me, this is, a, I hope it's not late too long, but I think that this day of international eradication of poverty is important, uh, not only to celebrate what has been achieved here, but also to place the work that has been done here in the context of the global, its global setting. Because I think the empowerment and the motivation and the thing that comes to people of knowing we now here this minute, we are part of one little cell in lots of cells around the whole globe who know what the problems are and are finding ways through it. And I think that's on a daily basis a terrific a lifelong motivating energy empowering thing to know that you're part of that kind of big movement. So um, the, um, there's about 800 mil, mil, million, um, you know, oh, that's, the history of Nkosa on the object is combating poverty and disadvantage. It fits so well with the offer, uh, efforts being promoted by the United Nations to draw the attention of the world for the need to identify the features of poverty and to work to find solutions and eliminate poverty. There's 800 million people today who are suffering hunger and there's twice that many who are suffering from malnutrition. There are 60 million people who are displaced <coughs> on the earth from conflict, from um, the desertification, from climate change, <coughs> and from all the other struggles on the earth. And those disasters are caused by acute poverty and intensified by gro gross inequalities. And that is the greatest moral challenge that faces the world today and all of us. The world has become more divided and the gap between the rich and the poor has increased to an unsustainable level. It can't go on as it is. And the solutions have to be global. I think that a much strengthened United Nations is where we will get the guidance and the leadership from. The great goodness in humanity that gave us the United Nations and the Human Rights Charter. They've been working tirelessly to identify, put on record what is happening to bring hope and a possible agenda for stopping this trajectory of destruction and for formulating a plan. Because in 1992, as he was saying, when the Shanti Project was already working with a like agenda, the United Nations declared the 17th of October as the International Day for the Eradication of Poverty. And they called on all of the agencies of the world and of society to cooperate with that. Then in 2000, 
we had the Millennium Goals and the United Nations got the agreement of all the leaders in the world to put in place an agenda for achieving the Millennium Goals, which was a 15-year plan to eradicate poverty and to empower women. Then last year was such a big, in our big year in 2016 or centenary, but worldwide it was a huge, huge year because the two great historical global events took place that put in place one universal agenda for the whole world, for all of us. In New York, the United Nations, 200 countries signed up to the Sustainable Development Goals, and in, um, in Paris in November, the 196 nations signed up and gave a um, legally binding commitment to the climate change deal. So the survival of the planet depends on the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals and of achieving climate change justice. And their, the Sustainable Development Goals, they're set to end hunger, poverty, protect the planet, empower women, and ensure education and prosperity for all. That's the, uh, the, the agenda and this, it's, been, it's part of the, the development agenda and each goal has 169 specific targets and they are to be met in the next 15 years. A lot was obtained in the 200 that we might have known the millennium ones, but this does another 15 year one to achieve a lot of those things and that will be by 2030, that there should be a lot of changes if people, the countries, but this is a great start, that there's, the, there's that commitment there. Now, if we're to achieve this, our global, we must seek to define new models of economics that are connected to ethics and are ecologically responsible, and we create new world institutions that are accountable, transparent, and rooted in democratic participation. And as global citizens, we must all be enabled and willing to play our role in becoming informed participants, willing and able to engage in the discourse on the creation and implementation of these models. Courageous citizens prepared to challenge, to question, and to explore new alternatives. So really, I think that sense of it, everybody has their big local goal here, and they also have the the, the global goal. And I find that exciting and hopeful because it's, it's a solidarity. You're not a small person. We're part of this big world and uh, vibrations like when our prayer there were going out, it's coming into us too. So there's a kind of a, a dynamic in the world that will achieve, achieve this, this world that we will all want to live in. And for the first time, everyone has the same agenda as their reference point. World bodies, governments, local government, civil society, the private sector, all education establishments, each individual in their community, in their home, and in their personal daily actions. It's essential that every man, woman, and child on the planet gets to know the, these millennium goals. And they have to know that any action that they take in one part of the world, that it isn't to be the detriment of people in another part of the world. That they have to be mindful that how our actions are affecting everyone else and how they're affecting our sisters and brothers worldwide. And we have to be informed both ethically and economically to test that the consumption of goods that we are taking, that it is not making other people in the world suffer our other people in our own country suffer. That kind of informed thing will have to come about. And there is a lot, I'm really um, heartened by going into schools, you know, we got them a lot, and a lot of them have projects on the Millennium Goals, you know, and of the thing of water, energy, how they live, you know, the, the end of poverty, the education, the uh, gender equality. And it's terrific to see, you know, that I think coming from that, that that is the object of this, that it will start, it's worldwide, it's coming from the leaders, also coming from the grassroots up, from civil society and that. So, but all, an awful lot in all of that is the transformation pertains to an overwhelming and sadly persistent global injustice against women. Oxfam Ireland has stated 
that gender inequality lies at the heart of the gap between the richest and the poorest people in the world. So the elimination of gender violence and the empowerment of women are absolutely essential if the planet is to survive. And we were in Africa, Central America, and every place. It's just recognized everywhere. The gender violence is just wrecking the economies of the, of the place and the whole productivity. And it is economically, it is wrecking the world, apart from the suffering that it's causing. And that there are lots of things like the He For She campaign. You know, the men have to come on board with women. The He For She campaign, which is the United Nations initiative, the man up one here, the trade union ones that so many, because domestic violence is everywhere. I'm amazed in places in the country I've been how prevalent it is in Ireland. When there is poverty, when there is, um, you know, disempowerment of people, the frustration which comes out in the home rather than, uh, you know, being dealt with in kind of looking for transformation, looking for things and recognising this is your your family or your people who are also wanting it, and it, it comes home to roost. So I think that that's, um, you know, that's really known, that women have to be empowered and that men and women all, it's in their all, all their interest to let this happen. So here in Tala, the Kossan's education for community development and learning, being pursued in your educational curricula and in the reach of your engagement, which is from zero years to 100, it's all aimed at achieving, yes, the hundreds of life expectancy now, <laughs> it's all aimed at achieving a community that has cohesion, cohesion solidarity, and warm-heartedness and love at its core. So if we are to achieve the goals, everybody from child to man has got to know they are and what an important, integral part, essential part each of them is in this. They're all out there. Is that so? I've no doubt that today's discussion that there will all kinds of uh, ideas come up, and the work you're doing is knowing how this can be furthered. And it's finally, it's, I think it's important to recognize the personal sacrifices that must be made. It is effort, it is work to get to know, to understand all of these things of how the economy is going and what you can do. So it is mean educating yourself further and putting the work for everybody into that and I think that the fact that these great reserves of courage, determination, resolve have continued to be found year after year, great achievement, 30 years here in Tala, it's inspiring and it's humbling and I congratulate all of those determined people who came here, who came in and trusted the thing and came in search of a better future and have found a voice and confidence that has allowed them to stay, to play a part in crafting that future for themselves, their children, their community, and through that, the wider community. I wish you all who participate in the Kossal every success, it's your work of transformation. So, Gormila Mahajur. <laughs>